everyone joining us. I'm Glory Hound, and today we're going to be talking all about RPGs and especially Fantasy Trip. We have Fantasy Trip Legacy Edition up here, and we have actually a Fantasy Trip show that's going on every Wednesday that we're super excited about, and we're super excited for you guys to check out. But we're also going to be talking about things that you can add to that, and you can add to your campaign as you're playing. We have Robin's Laws of Good Game Mastering here and some outdoor encounter cards that we're going to be talking about. Of course, make sure to leave lots of comments. Hello, Pedro, as we're going to be answering any questions that you guys might have about this. I have not personally opened these before, but I have been eyeballing like this thing right here, this book, for a while now. I really enjoy tips, like tips and tricks sort of books that can give my campaigns an edge as I'm running people through them, as I'm a game master. You know, I want to keep people interested and excited about every single campaign. And there are really amazing books out there that I always recommend people read because even if you're a longtime game master or you just started, you're always going to find something really interesting in these books or you're going to find something that spawns your imagination and your creativity in your own campaign that you can add to your campaign. So books like these are fantastic. And these things here, I'm going to tell you why I love these guys here so much. So with encounter cards or any sort of card that's going to help your campaign, I always enjoy those items because it cuts down the time that I have to plan the campaign or for newer game masters. This is a huge benefit because you don't have to make up everything on your own and be like nervous about what's going on or what's happening. Like everything is here for you. So we're going to open up these today. We're going to take it to the table here. All right, let's open up this book first here. So this is what I'm super, super excited about checking out. This is by Robin Laws, of course, because it's their good game of mastering. So I'm going to go through some of the chapters and stuff. There's a lot, a lot of information in here, guys, first off. Oh, I like this already. Okay. So in the book, we're going to go down some of the table of contents and stuff here. Now, this is knowing your players, in-game preferences, and getting to know your players, picking your rule set which is nice. So this is not just, I was wondering if this was just going to be like an exclusive fantasy trip thing, but it does look like it is an overall thing, which is always awesome. And a lot of times those game mastering books are like that, where they apply to any campaign, but they are those tips for everything. You have campaign design, the setting and the mission. In here, we have adventure design, dungeons and other unstructured adventures, preparing to be spontaneous. Names, dialogues, overcoming other blocks. Ooh, guys, this is good. Confidence, mood, and focus. What is the focus on and improvising? And then a final word on the ultimate dilemma. Okay, so I'm excited about the final word on the ultimate dilemma on that one there. And if you have any questions about a certain section on this, let me know. Ooh, I like this here that they added right here, a player goal chart on here. It's always good to, I mean, as a game master, you're designing your campaign. And as you're going through, you're excited to give the player something to interact in, but you also have to be giving them something something to chase the entire game, you know, because their aspirations and character aspirations are super important too in a campaign, you know? Picking your rule set, which is always nice because sometimes, especially with newer players, if you pick a rule set that is super hard to play, or super labor intensive with adding everything up. It takes away from the story a little bit for them. They might not be able to do as much stuff in that campaign mechanically, but it introduces them into this fantasy world in a very simple way. Like the fantasy trip melee and wizard sets can run an entire campaign for you. And it's a very simple rule set. And being able to do that and then putting your RPG on top of it and planning everything that you want to do and play over that is always fantastic, OK? So I like that they have that. Theme and tone, super important. Like, you can ruin a whole RPG by having the wrong theme and tone with people, guys. Like, super, super important. Power balance, that's a good one, too, for all the GMs that like 
killing all their players off. It's not always fun to kill off all the players. I talked to a GM once, and they were like, you know, we don't like killing off players, but whenever they do something really, really stupid, <laughs> like, that's when their character gets killed off because, like, they have to have consequences still, which I always think is really interesting because, you know, there's always that back and forth like this here, you know. We have game system continuum of crunchiness, which is really interesting. You have the power gamer, the tactician, the method actor, the butt kicker, the specialist, and the storyteller. And then this is actually saying crunchy, bits, weak, vague, or abstract. You want to go more towards the storyteller route here. And then for rules favor players with the method actors, tacticians, and power gamers. So you're going more towards this power gamer continuum here. So this is a lot of really, really good information here, especially for newer gamers or maybe for, you know, GMs who have like a homebrew or something that just isn't quite hitting the mark. It's not just quite exciting players. Absolutely. You know, you want to add something a little new here. Campaign design, which is really nice. Mission. Headquarters and re reoccurring cast. Everybody loves that. Adventure design. Okay, so plot hooks. Huge. Structuring your adventure. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to have those plot hooks and leave them in there early, but you also have to kind of be vague because you don't know exactly where all of your players are going to end up going. And that's super important because you want it to be open world and you kind of don't like want here's okay, so <laughs> here's the thing, guys. A GM can over plan an entire campaign, you know? And you still have to be somewhat like abstract and leave them with that open world and not get your hopes and dreams crushed every time you're GMing because they didn't go in the certain direction that you want to. You know, it's like a push and pull. You know, you're creating the story world for them and they're interacting within it, but they also kind of get to lead the campaign and where it goes as well. So I really love the fact that that sort of thing is also brought up in here and with the adventure design. Like that's really fantastic. We have some common structures that they have here and it looks like just kind of building like a very simple, okay, this is the items that we're going to do in this campaign, or uh, not in this campaign, but uh, maybe in this night or something here. So we have lots and lots of good, ooh, I have not seen this. Look at this, adventure worksheet. That's a good thing to like use and print off and then kind of advance your campaign through there. That's really interesting. Okay. Like, I really enjoy that part. That part's really interesting. Okay. Names and personalities. Example of the player goal chart. Of course, if you guys have any questions about anything, make sure and let me know in the comments. Preparing to be spontaneous. That's super important during a campaign. The best moments are the spontaneous, funny moments that happen that are just ridiculous, you know? Like, that's the best. <laughs> Handling specific focus problems. I know many of people that have serious issues with that stuff. And then your focus checklist, dialogue between PCs, NPCs. Yeah, I'm going to be reading this thoroughly. It's a 32, 33 page booklet here that you have on it. The print is, it's not super small, but we're looking at like that eight point font here. So there's just a lot of information packed into these 32 pages, guys. I am so excited to go ahead and read all of this and report back with everything that I learned. Because like I said, I'm always looking for new tips. Now, the second thing that we're looking at here are the outdoor encounter cards. And with the outdoor encounter cards, like I was saying before, these are huge to planning your campaign or if you have a current campaign and you kind of want to mix things up and stuff this is always fun as well you know sometimes I talk to people who are like all right well, we want to plan every single detail down to every single encounter and like why like sometimes you need a little bit of just differentness in there you know you need something different to change things up in your campaign and then of course for newer players or newer GMs these are always nice as well okay so I have not seen these. I'm excited to see what some of these are in here. What do we have? So a supplicant serpent. You notice something thrashing in a tree. It's a small snake. It seems to be waving. If something without hands can be said to wave. When it knows it's been seen, it drops to the ground and moves off slowly. Looking back, do you follow? 
Ooh. Oh, these are going to be super fun. And they do have, like, an older style, like, art on there. Like a fantasy, like a storybook art, you know? An old older style fantasy book art on here. Definitely matches, like, the Melee Wizard sort of set. But these cards here can 100% be used in any sort of campaign. They're not specific. They don't have any specific attributes or anything on them. Like, you can use these with anything. We have a quiet encampment, a shaky bridge, a goat-headed horror. Oh, I love this so much, guys. A dark grave. The standing stones around the grave emit a low humming as you approach. Is it a warning? If you move within two hexes of the gravesite, tentacles erupt from the grave. The horror within can only escape if the grave is disturbed. This is fun. Like, super fun, guys. Okay. An altar of horrors. How many cards do we have in here? So, although this is for, it says, you know, fantasy trip, outdoor encounter cards, a deck of 53 cards. For any uh, fantasy trip game master, I would definitely say, though, you can certainly use these with other other systems. Like, that's, I wouldn't see why not. Let me see if they have anything else here. So, this set of outdoor encounter cards brings plenty of adventures and selection of cards and provides you, the GM, with a variety of ideas that you can build on to launch an adventure to use this deck in a game, draw a card, and then the party is traveling across the landscape of your fantasy campaign world, and then get creative. Coming soon, Decks of Destiny, which I believe just is getting is getting out to its backers, like, soon? Like, I believe the box and everything is huge for that. I'll have to take another look at it. So, providing you with decks of treasures, rumors, creatures, wizards, fighters, and more. Yeah, I believe I've seen the fighter deck. But having fighters and wizards and creatures and everything where you can just kind of throw out these cards for a campaign, especially for those, like, NPCs and having those available, or if you're going to use those for certain players and stuff and them always having their card, it makes a game super simple to set up very, very quick. You can get people started right away. They can look through a deck of cards and go, oh, here's, here's my character, and then go from there, and then your campaign as you're going through, can become super simple with your encounters here by just going through here and picking something. And you don't even have to, like, pick it out of here, you know, just pick a random one. You can actually go through and it looks like have a particular theme because you have some tombs and you could add, like, a hanging tree. And so you could have a series of encounters here that you would be able to go ahead and play with. I'm excited about this, guys. Like... Yeah, I'm really down with the cards. I've gotten other card decks in the past for maps and uh, other encounters and everything, but I like the flavor text on these ones because uh, there's another encounter deck that I ended up getting that was more of like a room and then where the everybody was located at and stuff. I guess it was more of like a room deck, but this one here... I really like the fact that each card has its own little flavor text. So the Twisted Tower, it looks like it's been years since anyone entered this forgotten tower. If you listen carefully, though, you can hear voices from inside. The door is unlocked and unguarded. A trap door in the first floor leads to a pit of creatures that mimic a human voice. So as you can see, the flavor text is going to be right up here that you actually read to the players. And then what the Game Master is going to be doing is here... The flavor text is an italicized text, so it's very easy to go through and go, okay, this is what I'm reading to the players, and then this is going to be a plain text here that you can read to yourself and kind of know where the encounter goes. Like, I am super digging these. I'm going to have to read through a whole bunch of them now <laughs> and see what sort of encounters here that I can add to my campaigns. I'm going to have to see, too, if they're using this in the Fantasy Trip RPG campaign that they have on Wednesdays and stuff. Like, I want to know if they're using some of these encounters. We have a rain of frogs here. Look at him. The art is adorable on this. I'm going to have to check out who the art... Who did the art in this? Guys, I'm not for sure. It doesn't say on the box. I'm going to have to see. I wonder if it's the same person that did the Fantasy Trip art and everything. So, that would be exciting. We have a shattered ship. How it found its way to this stretch of land may never be known, but no adventurer worth their salt would leave it unsearched. 
and then you find the bodies of several men and women and a few coins and gems and small weapons. The cargo, if there was one, is missing. Oh, gosh. Phil and Steve did a great job with this. This is very entertaining. A night haunt, sleeping dragon, town on the rock, an old tree house. I like the old tree house. Look at that. That tree kind of looks alive. I'm not going to read the card, though, but it looks very fantastic. Very tons of fantasy in this. Man, I am down with this. So for the outdoor encounter cards, Guys, these are not just for new players. They're to spice up a campaign, make things super easy for you. Like I was saying before, I used to go to, I don't know, three RPG games every week. Probably, I want to say about 10 years ago. And I would run one of them, and we would go to two of them, and play in two of them. And that was like a weekly thing for me. And being able to just, they didn't have this stuff like that then, okay? Okay. <laughs> You had to make up all your own, your own stuff, and that took time and energy, you know? <laughs> this is awesome to be able to just pull some cards from a campaign, and it's going to make my one-shot campaigns that I do now because I don't have enough time to devote to doing a weekly RPG show all the time. It's going to make my one-shot campa campaigns very easy to put together. I can get grab, you know, two or three cards out of here, have several encounters that my players are going to go through and I don't have to worry about all the planning or this gives me ideas for okay I'm going to pick these three encounters and we're going to run an, a small one-shot campaign off of these three encounters and kind of make them relate so it's it just makes things so simple guys so nice and easy and for new players it gives new play or new GMs it gives new GMs a direction on where to go as for Robin's Laws of Good Games, of Good Game Mastering, like I said, anytime you see any books like this, I always recommend picking them up. These help everybody's campaign. It helps you manage your players better. It helps you become a better game master overall. It helps you think of things in a different light that you might not think of because you get so excited about planning that campaign and where to take the players that you might not always be thinking about where the players want to go. And that's huge combining that and just making things really focused and interesting because everybody plays a campaign differently you know you play with those power gamers out there and you play with those thematic storytelling players out there and stuff and being able to have a campaign where both types of players get everything they want in a campaign is a challenging thing to do but that's how all the good really good game masters do it you know that's what makes them a really good game master is the fact that they can continually bring you these exciting stories and you know game masters that have been doing it for a really long time that's where you want to get your information from guys <laughs> you know <laughs> because they have all the tips and tricks and ideas to make your campaign great and long lasting so thank you so much for joining me today guys i'm super excited everybody that got to hang out with me today we have the rpg show that they are doing on wednesdays at i believe it's 2 p.m central time i believe We'll have to see. It should come up in the, our little things down here. <laughs> but make sure to check that out and see Fantasy Trip get played live. And then we're also going to be doing unboxings on every Thursday. We also have our Kickstarter going on right now for Deadly Doodles 2. That is a dungeon in a box. And it's going to be an expansion to the original Deadly Doodles set. It adds more maps.